Are you looking for professional training in forensic mental health? So I'm Steve Hart and I'll be taking you through the next three days. I'm um, I trained as a clinical and forensic psychologist and I do most of my work on violence risk assessment. And one of my areas is uh, sexual violence. I, I do some work with sex offenders in, in uh, correctional and forensic mental health settings, but I also do some work on sexual violence or sexualized violence, including in workplaces and on campuses. So um, there's uh, so much stuff to talk about. Sexual violence risk assessment. Assessment is just gathering information for use in making decisions, right? Nice, simple, straightforward definition. You look it up in any dictionary of mental health practice and psychiatry, psychology, whatever, you'll find the same basic definition. The thing about this is the information you gather depends on why you're doing the assessment. But really important to remember a couple of things. First of all, the primary goal is to prevent violence. That's why we're here. We're trying to prevent sexual violence. That's the ultimate objective for us. But along the way, we have to do a couple of things. One of them is we prevent violence by guiding intervention. So our risk assessment procedures have to help us figure out what to do, how to act, how to manage the situation. We're going to look at all the stuff that you always look at, that you've been trained to look at, that you've been told are important. But what we're really going to do is look for the meaning of them to try to figure out their functional role, how we think they might actually be related to violence. When we get down to structured professional judgment guidelines, we're going to look at the legal literature. We're going to look at the scientific literature. We're going to look at the clinical literature, the professional or theoretical literature. We're going to put it all together and try to find things that are empirically supported or empirically validated as risk factors, things that are practically useful and things that are not legally offensive. We're going to try to put all those things together and say that's evidence-based. What we're going to do now is just um, finish off the afternoon talking about the SVR20 and the RSVP, give you a bit of a sense. So I want to introduce the process to you and then we'll get a chance to go through the manuals. Now we're going to think about the presence of risk factors and how they changed over time. And we're going to consider the standard risk factors, the basic 20, plus anything else. And what we're trying to do is get to the point where, based on the information we had, we're going to write that information down on the worksheet under the spaces that are provided and summarizing it so we're basically taking all that assessment information and sorting it into like 20 piles, plus any, any other piles that we need. To learn more about Concept's professional training opportunities, visit us at concept-ce.com.